Hello all. In this particular tutorial, I'll talk about how to set up the DB2 database auditing and I'll be using IBM DB2 11.5.4 for this particular tutorial. The DB2 allows you to configure audit at different event types such as audit, checking, segment, object man, sysadmin, validate, context, execute. You can configure the audit at a particular event, only one event or one or more event based on your requirement. The segment means any, any grant or revoke. Object meant means any object created, dropped. Sysadmin means any activity that needs sysadmin privilege. Checking means whenever authorization check is done. Audit means you have configured the audit started, audit stopped, audit etc. So you can choose one or more of these particular audit events. The important audit related tables are syscat.audit policies. This particular table will show all the audit policies that have been created in your database. Syscat audit use will show which audit is currently in use by the database. The default audit location is instance home directory, SQL lib, security, audit data. So this, if you do not specify any audit location, this is where your audit log will be written to. To create an audit, we need to execute two statements. We'll create an audit policy and then to use that particular policy, we'll say audit database using policy and we'll give the name of the audit policy that we have created. So in this case, my audit policy name is audit DB sec. So I'm creating an audit policy called audit DB sec and category segment means anything related to security grant or revoke and status is equal to both, which means it will capture success as well as failure events. The in the second to do, uh, exercise, what I'm going to do is like the audit policy that I created, it was only having the segment category. Now I want to alter that or audit additional events which are related to object maintenance such as create, alter or drop of any objects and of the category both. Then what I, I have two options, I can either drop that policy and recreate it or what I can do is like I can create one more policy. So I'm creating one more policy and I'm replacing. So I'm replacing. So I'm using the keyword replace to replace with the new policy that I have created. So this is how you will you will modify your policies or create additional policies and you can replace your policy. Then once we have we have created our audit policies using these two particular tables. We will see what are the syscat audit policies. We'll list all the audit policies that have been created. Audit use will show which audit policy is in use. So we will verify that we have our audit policies in created in the database. Then once everything is done, we will generate some audit records such as create table and granting. So this will relate to object maintenance. This will relate to sec maintenance activity. So we, we have set those two categories. So we will create an object and we'll revoke, we'll grant an uh, authority and we will see if both of these events are captured by our audit facility. The to extract the audit records, you, you can, you have two options. You can either use the sysproc method. So this, you, this particular method needs you to connect to the database and first you will archive the audit log and then you will extract it. Remember, you have to first archive it and then only you can extract. Do not try to extract the logs before archiving. You cannot extract the logs from the active audit log. So you have to follow this in the sequence. You have to archive the logs and then extract the logs. The DLIM extract, you, there are other options that you can specify. You can, here I have used all the default options, but you can see, I, you can configure it. This particular setting means that this is the target where it's going to extract. This is the source location where the audit file is there. And this particular parameter says extract only logs corresponding to sysment. So you can configure this particular command based on your needs. The second method of extracting the records, audit records is using the DB2 audit. So first we will archive the audit logs. You will archive the audit logs. And once we have archived, you will use the DB2 audit extract command to extract the audit logs. Here what I'm saying, first we are going to archive to this particular location and then we are going to extract from this particular location, this particular file to this particular location. So this is how you will extract your audit records. The to remove your audit policies, you first you have to, you, if you want to drop your audit policy, which is active, you have to first drop 
remove that particular policy the the un inactive policy you can remove so this particular policy which is not active currently we will be able to remove but this policy this particular statement will fail because we will not be able to remove an active policy to remove an active policy we have to first remove that, that policy associated from the database and then only we can drop it so this was this is the this is the explanation on how to set up your audit and let's start with our tutorial so let me go to this particular location first first what i'll do is i will connect to my sessions so i'm connecting to the dbp instance so i'm connecting to the dbp instance in two different windows so let's do that and let me go to this location ls minus l as you can see it's currently empty this is the default location instance home directory sql lib security audit data so this is the default location i've gone there and as you can see in that particular location i do not have any logs or any data as of now so now what we will be doing is before setting up the audit i will show you that my db2 audit described which is currently false and none of these settings are being set at the db2 audit to audit the database, we do not need the DB2 audit to be active. We do not need DB2 audit to be active to audit the database. Remember this point. We do not need the DB2 audit to be active for the database to be audited. So this, we do not have to turn it on. So now what we will be doing is we will set up the audit. So let me, let me show you what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this particular script, which I shown you in the beginning how to set up the audit so this is the script for i'm going to create an audit policy called audit db sec category segment status both and then i'm going to enable that particular audit policy so let me run that particular statement so to run that particular statement i will connect to the database and run those particular statement and all the three commands got executed successfully now what we will be doing is we will verify using this particular command we will verify that uh, the whether we have so we can see i have got one policy in my database and that particular data policy is active at the database level the command that i used was actually the verify audit these are the two tables as i mentioned where you can see this particular table will list all the audit policies and this particular table will show which audit is in use so these are the two queries that i have ran to check what are the audits that i have got in my database so that's done now what we will be doing is the next part so i have done this so i have created an audit policy and i have create activated it at the database level the if, in this particular audit policy i'm auditing only segment but now i want to also audit the object meant and to do that we will be replacing the current policy so i'll create another policy and i'll replace the current policy with this particular policy before doing that let's see if i have any audit data generated and as you can see i do not have any audit data generated i'll tell you why we do not have the audit data generated as of now and i can assure you that audit is currently active not the db2 audit the db2 audit is still off we do not need to turn it on i have mentioned it before we do not need to turn it on but my audit is still not audit is active but audit has not generated any records let's let's not jump to conclusion why it is not working let's wait let's wait then what we will be doing is as i mentioned i will be creating another audit policy so let's do that so before doing that let's verify that i have only one audit policy in the database and that is currently active and we are going to replace that particular audit policy with second object so with this particular ob audit policy we are going to replace that particular audit policy so to do that let me run the another command so replace audit so i'm going to do that so all the commands got successful and if now if i run the verify audit you will see that i have got two different audit policies but only one of them is active then the one which i created just now is active let's see if i have got audit records and you can see that i still do not have any audit records the reason why there are no audit records is because there is no activity which is performed at the database level which will generate the audit record so and unless or until you don't perform that particular kind of operations the audit record file will not be generated so now let's do one thing let's actually let's do one thing 
let's actually generate some audit record. So this is the file. I'm going to create a table. I'm going to grant a DBADM access uh, the, on a particular database uh, on that particular database to user DBS. So let's do this. So now I'm going to run gen, run this particular command. So 04, I'm going to run this. And if this particular command got successful, I should have my audit records. As you can see, till now I was not having the audit records. Now I got the audit record. Can you read this particular file? No, you will not be able to read this particular file. This particular file is is basically in the unreadable format. So you will not be able to read that particular file. So how to read this particular audit? record so to do that what we have is we have two different options we we can either use the sysproc method okay so first we will archive the audit logs and then we will extract them so if we if we if we archive so let's do one by one so once we archive the log then a timestamp will get added to this particular file and then we will extract it so the extract will generate the, the delimited file. So right now you can see that we have only the audit log file. We do not have the timestamp. Okay, so let's do one by one. So let's, uh, let me see if I have got that particular setup. So extract audit logs. Okay, so cat this particular file. So clear the screen. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to connect to the database. Okay, ls minus l. You can see I it's the audit log. This is the active active audit log. I'm going to archive it. That's done. Let me show. So this particular audit log now is timestamp. So it got archived. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear my screen. Ls minus l. You can see that I have only the audit logs, uh, the archive audit log. So now I'm going to extract that particular log. So let me run this particular statement here. Okay, so that's done. And now if I do ls minus l, you can see that DEL objects, previously there was only one file. Now we have the delimited extract files. And let's verify those events that we have got ls minus l. We have got an event at this segment level. So let's verify that. And as you can see, the grant that we did to use a DBS, the DBADM grant that we did, that has been captured. These are some of the implicit grants. We can ignore them. These are captured by the DB2. Let's see if the object maintenance. So we created one object. Let's see if that particular event is captured. And you can see the object maintenance event where we created a table table test t1 even that has been captured so both of our events that we did we th those events have been captured by the this particular so how to extract so we used sysproc audit archive to archive the log and sysproc audit delim extract to extract the logs so this is the method one we can use the sysproc method to extract the log the another method is the db2 audit method so we, we can use the db2 audit method to extract the logs. So let's do one thing. Let me generate some more logs now. Before doing that, let me clear all of these files. So, you know, so I've cleared it. There is nothing here. Okay. So ls minus l, it's empty. I'm in the audit location, audit data location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate some more audit logs. So let's, let's do that. So that's done. ls minus l. Now we have got an audit file. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the not the sysproc, the db2 audit method to ext archive and extract. So the command that I'm going to run is this particular command. So let's do that. So that's done. And now you can see the file. It won't be here. You can see that file is not here at all. That file from here is gone. That file is gone to this particular location because we said let's archive to this particular location. So let me go to that particular location and show you that that particular file, this log archive, this log location archive has been archived to this location. And why it went to this location? Because when we archived it, we specified the location where we want to archive. Now that we have archived it, the last thing that we want to do is extract the logs. So let's extract to extract. I'm going to extract in this particular location. So let's go there. LS minus L, you can see it's blank. So there is absolutely nothing in this particular directory. 
Now I'm going to run this particular statement to extract my audit log. So let me run this. And before doing that, I need to know the log name. So I'm going to replace it here. That's done. And let me run this. And operation successful. LS minus L. You can see there was nothing in this particular directory. LS minus L. We got all these audit events. And now let's verify the two events that we have got. So object maintenance should be having the revoke state. Uh, object maintenance should have the drop object. So you can see the object that we dropped. It is there. And sec maintenance should have the revoke statement that we executed. The revoke statement that we executed, it is there. So our audit is working fine. And let me repeat the DB2 audit describe the audit at the instance level is not turned on. It is still false. The audit at the instance level is. So all of this audit is configured via the audit statements at the database level. Now, finally, if we want to stop the auditing or remove the audit policies, basically we can we we can we can just remove the audit policies using this particular statement. But I want to actually also remove the audit policies that we have cl created. So how do I do that? So now, now let me do one thing. Let me connect to the database. So I'll do one thing. I'll go here as well. So CD CD DB2. Okay. Let me go here and verify what are the two audit policies that I have got. So the two audit policies that I have got is the audit DB sec and sec object and the sec object is one which is active. So now let me do one thing. Let me try to delete the active policy, the policy which is active. I'm going to delete it from my database. I'm going to try doing that. So the policy which is active is this. I'm going to drop this particular policy. Let's see what happens. And as you can see, it has failed. We cannot drop an active policy. That particular statement has failed. How about trying to drop a policy which is not active? So this policy is not active. So let's try to drop that. And as you can see, we have two audit policies. One of them is active, one of them is not active. So let me drop this inactive policies that got successful. Let's verify that that has got successful. And now we have only one audit policy, which is the active audit policy. If I try to drop the active audit policy, I have already shown it, it is going to fail. So how do I do that? So let me stop auditing. Let me stop auditing. So I'm going to remove the audit policy from the database. So that's done. And then if I drop the audit policy, it works fine. And now let me verify what I have got at the database level. And as you can see, no audit policy is created and my active policy is also not there. So this is how you clean up the audit policies. So to set up the audit at the database level, we will be using the audit policy statement. We'll create the audit policy and we will be using the audit database statement to audit the database level. So, and the two important tables that you can use is syscat.auditpolicies and syscat.audituse. And this is the default audit location where your audit data will be stored. I hope this particular tutorial was useful. In this particular tutorial, we saw how to set up the DB2 database auditing and we have used IBM DB2 11.5.4. And as, as we were before ending the tutorial, I'll just show you that this particular tutorial was done on DB2 11.5.4. So this is the version that I have used. I hope you like this particular tutorial. Thank you for watching. See you in next tutorial. And if you did like my video, do subscribe to my channel and I'll keep on making more better videos. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.